It's becoming a tradition for heavy fucking metal to take over Times Square, New York. Last week we had the down show. Today we have the fucking mighty Amon Amar from Sweden. Some call him the Viking Metals, but they're just a good representative when it comes to heavy metal. We have an exclusive interview with fucking Amon Amar, and we're going to show you what's going to go inside right there at the Best Buy Theater, which used to be called the Nokia Theater, and whatever it's called, it, tonight is fucking the Heavy Metal Theater. We're going to take over, we're going to destroy it, because what the fuck? We are heavy metal motherfuckers, and that's what we do. So I want everybody to put their horns up for Amon fucking Amar from the middle in the fucking world. <laughs> Ah, it's good to be back in the Big Apple. And it's fucking great to see you people again. Four Horse Hard Rocks, Joe Shifton here at the Best Buy Theater in New York City. I want to welcome Amon Amarth to New York City because we have always in New York City respected and appreciated Amon Amarth. I think you guys have always had a pretty good crowd in New York City. Yeah, ever since the first time we ever played here, we have, have had a great crowd, so we, we love to come here and play, definitely. And tonight is your show. Did you ever expect when you guys started to one day be playing in Times Square to your own crowd? Like, today is all about Amon Amarth. Well, uh, that was nothing I was uh, even dreaming about a few years back, but it's, it's really fun to do this. And, you know, even though we were a bit, a lot of pressure on us when we started the tour doing all by ourselves, you know, would people enjoy it or would, would they come at, at all? So yeah, it, it feels, feels great. And compared to other sets, obviously, that you've done before, what is the difference between this one? Because I'm sure the preparation for this was a lot more extensive since it's all you guys. Yeah, I mean, we had we had to first of all we had to practice a new album a lot, you know, and and then make the set and all you know all the things with the as you said preparation, you know, because there this is much tougher than doing like a normal set because this takes so much more on your on your uh, like uh, physically it's it's tough. So we can't really party as much as we <laughs> would like to, and and we have to make sure we sleep and stuff. So. But it, it's 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 all worth it in the end, you know. It's it's really cool experience, definitely. And obviously, the response of your new album, Soldier Rising, has been phenomenal. When I heard it, I mean, I was immediately hooked on it. But you know, it's always about as for like you know, some people have a certain ear for something. But I've seen a real good response from like every age group. Like everybody you yeah. talk to is like, oh yeah, you know that album. So take us a little bit into the you know like a couple years ago when you guys started the production for that and the concept that you guys were going for. Well, I mean, when we started recording, we, we, we just wanted to do all the touring done for, for Twilight of Thunder God before we started writing songs. So once we were done, we took like a, a month off or something, just relaxed, and then we focus, focused on this new album. And, and I guess we wanted to, to make it more, like sound-wise, we needed a more raw sound, a bit more um, acoustic sound, you know, we want to have a bit more guitars and stuff. And also made, we uh, are like goal was to make the fast songs even a bit more faster and, and then the, the epic song even even more epic than than on the previous album like a more wide album in general you know that that's was the basic idea we had then was the recording process like the typical i'm on a mother recording process or you guys tried different things this time around well the one of the biggest difference from from the last album was that we recorded the drums in a completely different studio because we needed a, a like a bigger room for them so we rented another studio just recording the drums during a couple of weeks and then we moved everything to the studio where we record the guitars and vocals otherwise it was not a huge difference from from the other productions we've done you know we worked a bit more we had a bit more pre-production with with our producer you know we mm -hmm. we uh sent him demos and stuff we recorded and he also came up to to our rehearsal room a couple of times you know we sat down just went through the songs and and talked about you know what's good and what's bad so it was a bit more pre-production i guess than the previous albums and when you guys heard it, when you got the final mess of the final mix, were you guys expecting to be number one on Billboard and to get all these amazing reviews from everybody from Metal Hammer to every single website that is talking about your album right now? Well, I don't know. Just when you when you it's just finished with everything and, and you listen to it, it's just like uh, it's uh, you can't really say anything because your your so your head is so full with with all the recording and everything that happened the the last couple of months before that. So. It usually takes a, a, a few weeks or a month before you can really understand or take in what, what you just recorded. So if someone asks you straight after you 
leave the studio you can't really say if, if it's if it's good or bad you just you just made whatever you could and then then you have to melt like let it sink in a little sink in a little bit i guess let it digest a little yeah. bit get into it and you were saying before as far as like practicing the songs for their new album was that because you were saying they're obviously more technical even though you guys have always been a high technical band but was it like a hard process for you guys were you guys struggling a little bit no i mean just because now we play the whole album in its entirety it's like uh we play songs that we probably won't play in a, in a normal set because you don't some songs are not really live songs or they don't fit our live set at least so now we get to play like all different kinds of stuff and we also have a lot of like guitar effects stuff that we never used before so it's much more like pedals on the floor for the guitar players to to keep track of you know and, and so yeah it's been some practicing with that you know kind of a, to make the studio songs into a live song it takes some preparations Definitely. And if we we'll go back in time when you guys started getting together back in 1992, I mean, which is a you know it's a very pretty long time ago. <laughs> what were you guys? I mean, listening to at that time, what was like the artists that you were basically saying? You know what? Let's do something that powerful, that inspiring. I don't think we had like a, any band that we wanted to to copy in a, in any way, but we listened to uh, mainly like. Uh, 80s heavy metal that's where we came from you know the our maid and judas priest but then also the thrash wave came and we listened to slayer and metallica and all that and and then just after that the death metal wave hit you know and and of course we were a fan of that too so i guess all, all the early old school death metal bands they were a big influence on on whatever we did back in 92 i would say And as far as the Scandinavian movement of music, especially because when you guys came out, it was in the rise. And now, obviously, everybody knows about Swedish metal, Norwegian yeah. metal, Finnish metal, because I of guess. the different bands that rose yeah. up. But I guess we, we sort of missed the first train, you know, with Entombed and, and Dismember and all those Swedish old school, old school classic death metal bands. We sort of, we played at the same time as, as them, but we never got, we never, we just, just, a bit too late you know so we had to wait for sort of the next wave you know we just did our thing and sort of happened to uh, be it's the same thing that some other bands also did like more melodic kind of death metal uh, more Gothenburg style as some people might call it you know so we sort of we ended up on, on the next the next wave if, if you if you say so flag holders of the Swedish metal movement and not only that about heavy metal because you guys have always taken it very seriously and I'm sure like when the decision came down to all right this is what we're gonna do for our lives it wasn't like kind of you got into the music to become successful but you just make, got into the music because that's what you guys wanted to do and that comes across and it's a worldwide thing and if you would have to take a few places or a few venues obviously we're talking about New York City because now you guys are taking over completely yeah. and which are the crowds that you're always like looking forward to play to Well, I mean, the, our fans has, has been great wherever we gone. I, I don't know if it's our kind of music. You know, it's 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 alive. We got a live feeling to our music, so people usually go crazy. But uh, we we did our first uh, South American tour last year, and that was uh, quite amazing. You know, it's it's, it's a different crowd. You know, much more. Uh, sing along and and like more of a football crowd as we, <laughs> as we call it in Europe. So it's that was quite amazing. And then also we played our first time ever last year in in Japan. Always been a dream and and was quite amazing audience actually. You know you didn't know what to expect from 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 those guys. But that was also really fun. You know. But we we have I mean we have good crowds everywhere. Germany of course one of our first right. countries where we really played outside Sweden always been close to our heart so it's it's been many good places all right brother before we get out of here if there's anybody out there who maybe hasn't heard i want to martha even though i don't think but if they haven't heard it or if they haven't heard your new album which is kick us if you haven't def definitely got to check it out what message do you have for them well i'll just check it out because i think you won't be disappointed Thank you. And on behalf of New York City and Horns Up Rocks, I want to wish you guys like not only an awesome show today, but the whole tour without any hiccups, because I know being on the road can be really hard. Yeah. So keep saying, keep at it. You guys are definitely like doing amazing for everybody in metal. As I said, you guys are representing heavy metal, not just Swedish metal, even though I'm a huge fan of Swedish metal. But yeah. I think what you guys are doing overall for heavy metal, it's awesome. And, you know, hopefully, as you guys always want to do, some young kid who's going through trouble through anything will pick up an instrument and be like, you know what? I want to do what they're doing. Yeah. 